Well, welcome to the night of worship. I am Pastor Thomas, and I have Pastor Moses Hi, here with me. Hey, would you let us know where you're streaming yeah. from tonight? Put it in the chat below. And if this is your first time joining us here for Center Street Church Night of Worship, we would love to get to know you, hear your story, and have you become part of our Center Street family. So check out our website, cschurch.ca, down in the link below, in the description below, and find out all the ways that you can get connected with us. Well, we are about to start worship. So, hey, I want to encourage you, get your space ready, right? Like, just set aside anything that might distract you, and let's get ready to engage in worship. So, will you come worship with us here now, tonight? See you later. See you later. Well, welcome everybody. How are you feeling tonight, night of worship? You guys ready? Woo! My name is Pastor Moses. I'm one of the youth pastors here at Center Street Church. And I am Pastor Thomas, one of the young adult pastors here at Center Street Church. Hey, if you're out in the atrium and you can hear my voice, I'm going to encourage you to come on in. We are going to start worship here shortly. And if this is your first time joining us for a night of worship, welcome here. We are so glad that you're joining us tonight. We have a great evening planned for you tonight. We're, we have a word from Pastor Ben. We have worship, of, of, of course, and a time to hang out with each other and baptisms that are going to be happening tonight. Yeah, and so if you are here tonight and you want prayer, I'm, I really want to encourage you, go meet some of our prayer partners over here in this corner, and there will also be some around the sanctuary. And if you want to get baptized tonight, hey, I want you to know baptism isn't for those who are perfect. Baptism is for those who've decided to follow Jesus and want to follow him for the rest of their lives. And so you don't have to be perfect to get baptized. So come meet me, Pastor Ben, or Pastor Renita over here in this corner, and we would love to chat with you about baptism. Yeah, and we just want to encourage everybody to use this space as they feel the Lord prompting them tonight. So stand up in the aisles, stand up in your seats, come to the front. And let's worship together. Come on, would you stand to your feet? Stand with Join us. us. Come on, let's stand. Down from 10 seconds. Here we go. 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, y'all, know this song. Come on, let's get our hands together. Do just like I'm doing. Let's try hands over the head. Sing a cloud 
of that truth. Amen. See you break down every wall. I don't know what you brought into this room today, but I want you, I want you to know that, that he can break down any wall in your life, that he can break, take care of any situation that you're going to bring to him. So let's see faith rise tonight. I want you to lift up your needs to him. Whatever it is you're praying about, we're going to give him our praise and give him our worship. We won't hold anything back tonight, amen? Come on. I can't hold back my praise. I'm going to let it out. I can't hold back my soul.
with the voices. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. It's not like you. What a powerful Come on, one more time. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name. excited to be here tonight. How about you? I'm excited to be here because uh, we get to do something real special when we come together and worship. And sometimes it's lost on us. Sometimes it can pass us by and we can miss it. And so I want to take a moment and just encourage you with something that we're about to sing. 
Um, in this next song, there's a phrase that's real powerful that sometimes we don't fully grasp. And as I was preparing for tonight, the Holy Spirit just prompted me to, to just break this down and, and really just pull the lyrics off the page for us so we, just, so we don't miss it. And that phrase is, day and night, night and day, let incense arise. You see, in the Old Testament, if you don't know what incense is, uh, the Old Testament, they would burn incense in the, in the tabernacle. And really what incense is, is a combination of spices. And when it gets burned, it makes this real beautiful smell. It's quite distinguished. And the priest would burn, would burn this incense in the morning and then at night. And this incense would, would represent the praises of the people. And so in Psalm 141, David says, I call to you, Lord. Come quickly to me. Hear me when I call to you. May my prayer be set before you like incense. May the lifting of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. And you see in the New Testament in Revelation, we, we hear a lot about incense. But we're told that in the New Testament, the incense is, is the prayers of the saints, the worship of the saints. And so in Revelation 5 and 8, you probably have heard this before. It says, Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and a golden bowl of, full of incense which are the prayers of the saints. And so the Old Testament was this incense that was burned as an offering of praise. And, and now today, our prayer and our worship is this incense going to heaven. And this is where our prayer and worship goes. It doesn't just bounce off the ceiling here. Real time, right now, as you worship the Father, as you bring your needs to Him, as you tell Him He's... He's worthy. As you tell him you love him, these praises rise and they, and they fill these golden bowls as a fragrant offering of incense to Jesus himself, the lamb who was slain. And when I sat with that this morning, I thought, wow, as I, as I worship Jesus right now, he's sitting at the throne and the elders and the saints are, they're, they're smelling this incense and, they're, and it pleases the heart of the Father. What a powerful concept. So I encourage you tonight, don't, don't miss the significance of this. And, and if you're here tonight and you doubt that maybe God doesn't hear your prayers, maybe you doubt that maybe he hasn't heard you or maybe he doesn't love you, trust and believe and know that God hears your prayers and that he loves it when his people worship him. It pleases the heart of the Father. So as we sing this next song, I just want you to begin lifting up your prayer to him, lifting up your worship to him, whatever it is, like we said, you brought into the room, or maybe you just right now, you want to just tell him how thankful you are for him. Tell him how much you trust him with your life. Tell him how much you love him. Right now, even before we start to sing, just close your eyes, lift your hands to him, and just focus on him. Don't, don't be concerned about what's going on on the stage. Just worship him. He's worthy of it all. You're worthy.
presence, giving you the praise you deserve, God. Sing this out day and night. songs, uh, I feel like I, I've sung these growing up and uh, I've heard them before, they're familiar, uh, but it's important that we don't lose sight of what we're actually singing. What we just sang was, you are worthy of it all. That's a lot to give. <laughs> That's giving all that we have, all that we, um, that God's given us, pouring it back out to him in praise. If we believe that he is worthy, then we need to give him everything and worship to him. 
we need to set our eyes on Christ and make him the focus of our praise. In Colossians 3, verses 1 to 2, uh, it says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. So as we sing, let us shift our mindset from the distractions of everything that can happen around us, even the distraction of music. Let us be focused on Jesus and Jesus alone. As we begin to sing this next song, I want to just pray uh, Psalm 1914 over us and let it be your prayer as well. Uh, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer.
are all we have. As we love you, adore you, Jesus. Yes, we love you, adore you, Jesus. Yes, we love you, adore you, Jesus. Yes, we love you, adore you. Let's sing this together. Lift peace that outlasts darkness. Hope that's in the blood. This future grace that's mine today. That Jesus Christ has won. So I can face tomorrow. For tomorrow's in your hands. All I need, you will provide, just like you always have. I'm fighting a battle, you already won. No matter what comes my way, I will overcome. I don't know. Somebody thank him tonight. Oh, my Savior, my defense. No more fearing life or death. I know how the soul wants to out. We will. more free no more feeling for them come on with everything you got sing it again I know how the story is No more fear in life. 
control it would not work out like it's supposed to let's pray Jesus thank you that you are in control Colossians 1 says you were there in the beginning you're the alpha and the omega you are in control you have a plan and so therefore I can rest in the knowledge that you're the hero of every story and that you want to be the hero tonight. Jesus, as we hear from you tonight, would it be your words, not mine? In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys can go ahead and have a seat. Hi, Stephen. I fought a bear. In nothing but my underwear, and I'm not really sure who was more scared, the bear, myself, or some of you that may have just pictured that fight. (laughs) But about 13 years ago in Prince George, BC, where I grew up, I was awoken in the middle of the night. It was about two o'clock in the morning, and there had been a string of break-ins in our area and I heard a terrible noise coming from my garage. So I jumped out of bed, and I let my Rottweiler out the back door, and then I went bursting out the front door. And as I rounded the corner of the garage, I ran into something solid and furry, and we both fell over to the floor, And then I like to think that both of us screamed, but it was probably just me. But all I know is that as I lay there on the ground and I saw this black bear get to its feet and run off, I was still screaming. And I'm not very good at basketball, but I felt like I could jump about 10 feet in the air. I'm not sure I've ever experienced an adrenaline rush like that in my entire life. As I look back now, I realize how stupid that was for multiple different reasons. Like what if somebody had had been breaking into my garage? They would have now been armed with all of my tools, sledgehammers, axes, chainsaws, and I would have had nothing. Or what if it had just been the neighbor taking his trash out? Like that would have been a terrible image for him to have had to live with for the rest of his life. See, we live in a scary world. And we live in a world where things happen. And sometimes it can be really scary. And then in 1 Thessalonians, we're called to a life of holiness. And holiness means to be set apart, to be different to live differently to this world. God calls us to be strong and courageous in this world and live a life of holiness, and that's really, really scary. So tonight, we are gonna unpack my favorite verse in the Bible. It's a verse that I have read to myself multiple times, and as I prepared for this message, 
it became a verse of soothing peace. And it's Joshua 1, 9. And that's what we're gonna unpack tonight. So let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for an opportunity to come here tonight to worship you and to hear a word from you. And so Jesus, again, I ask and pray that it would be your words I speak tonight, not my own. In Jesus' name, amen. In Joshua, we hear the story of how the children of Israel entered into the promised land and then took the promised land as God had promised them. Now, it took them 40 years to get to that position, but this was the land that God had promised them. And Joshua had some really big shoes to fill. I'm sure most of you guys have heard about this guy named Moses, you know, rescued the children of Israel from Egypt, divided the Red Sea, made water come out of the rock, like pretty big, significant biblical character. And at the beginning of Joshua, we learn that Moses is dead and that Joshua has been the man put, placed by God to now lead the children of Israel. And in Joshua chapter one, God gives Joshua one command three times. Be strong and courageous. First, in verse six, be strong and courageous. And then in verse seven, be strong and very courageous. And finally, in verse 9, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. If God ever says something three times, it's something we should take note of. So to go a little deeper, let's look a little bit at the original language that this phrase would have been written in. And the phrase, quite simply, is rock, hazak, amatz. Okay, pretend like we're in, in language class. You guys are going to say this with me now. Rock, hazak, amatz. So let's say it all together now. Rock, hazak, amatz. Now say it like you mean it. Rock, hazak, amatz. Awesome. You guys are great. You guys must have fantastic teachers. If God says something three times... It's worth noting. And the original Hebrew gives us a deeper understanding of what God called Joshua to and what he's saying to us today. So let's start with the first word, rock. Okay? Pretty simple word in the Hebrew language, but it's an action word. It's a call to do something. And so as Christians, we are not called to just sit around and do nothing. We are called to do something. So rock is an action word. The second word is hazak. And this means to strengthen yourself in the Lord. We can be strong because of God. We can mentally become strong because of God. That means that when temptation, desire, and distrust of God come before us, we are called to be strong in heart and with all of our souls and with all of our strength and with all of our mind. The devil doesn't have a lot of tricks. But one of the things that he will use is every opportunity to make us distrust who God is and who God has made us to be. I want you guys to remember this, that God doesn't make mistakes. And this word hazak is found multiple times throughout the Bible. And depending on the location of it, it, it shows what the person is putting their faith and trust and strength in. And what God is saying to Joshua here is, I want you to be strong because of me. I want you to be strong because of me. Joshua, I know you're scared. Joshua, I know you have insecurities. Joshua, I know that you have to lead the children of Israel across the river and into the promised land. And I know you've already been there once with 10 other people and your buddy Caleb. And the 10 people believed it was too hard of a task. I know you have a hard thing ahead of you. But if you do it with me, you will be strong because I will make you strong. And then lastly is a beautiful word called Amatz. It's courage, courageousness, and fearlessness. 
It's wisdom. See, sometimes God will call us to something that is scary. Or God will call us to something that is really daunting. Actually, when Thessalonians says that we are called to be holiness, that's actually pretty scary. Because what we're called to is we are called to be different in this world. We are called to be set apart. And so God says, not only do I want you to be strong because of me, but I want you to be fearless with me. I want you to be courageous in me. The word courageous actually means to do something even though you're frightened. So when we put all of that together, it's a call to action. It's a call to do something. It's a call to be strong in God. And then it's a call to be courageous even when we are afraid. And at the end of verse 9, God ends it with, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So how do we do that? How do we become strong and courageous? I think that Luke chapter 6 puts it perfectly. Jesus goes up the mountain to pray and to hear from God. And then Jesus comes down the mountain and he chooses his disciples. And then they go out into the country And they start to do the work of God. And they start to teach and they start to heal and they start to go about God's kingdom business. That is what we are called to do. We have to spend time with God. We have to spend time together. That's why we put such an emphasis on community groups. And then we're called to action to get out there and do something. We have to be about God's work. But we can only be about God's work if we're spending time in God's word, in worship, and then in community with others. It comes from living a life of holiness. We have to be the examples. The world will try to convince you that you don't have what it takes And that your small opinion and life will make no difference. But I love in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 39 where it says, But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. The world would want you to shrink back, to distrust God, to lean on the world's understanding of how things should be, To convince you that who God is and who he says you are called to be is all a lie. But God says, Raka Zakamatz, be strong and courageous in me. Don't shrink back. Don't be destroyed. Keep the faith. Keep going. Keep pursuing me. Keep striving after the plan and the purpose that I have given you. Don't back down and don't give up. Be strong and courageous. And I love that Hebrews chapter 10 verse 39 comes right before Hebrews 11. Because Hebrews 11, I consider it the superhero chapter of the Bible. And it's all about faith. And when you read through it, it's about how Abraham had faith and Noah had faith and Moses had faith. And then at the end of the chapter, the the author of Hebrews goes, and I don't even have time to tell you about all of these others who saw God give them victory after victory after victory, rock, hazak, amatz, be strong and courageous. Holiness isn't easy. Living a different life isn't easy. When God calls us to be different in this world, he's calling us to stand alone sometimes. He's calling us to refrain from the impurities that are before us and to stop doing some of the things that perhaps we enjoy doing because he calls us to a life of holiness. Here's the thing though. Living a life of holiness can be really scary. And so I want to share a story of a time when I was really afraid. It was two weeks ago. We did a fear factor at Airdrie Youth for our fam night. And I said to our students, 
that we would bring the reptile people in. And that for every one of the students that was there that night would equal one second that I would hold a snake. Now here's the backstory. This is petrifying to just stand here because that snake in that picture right there looks about as big as it felt when I held it, okay? Now here's the thing. When I was five years old, I met a similar snake. See, my teachers thought it would be really cool to bring the snake people into our kindergarten class. Right? And then the guy that was handling the snakes thought it would be great to wrap five-year-old snake around my shoulders. And I have lived with an irrational fear of snakes for 30 years. Now, here's a little side story. My wife and I went to Florida for our honeymoon. And we found a deal for Billy Bob's Safari Park. Okay? We're driving down the interstate. We see this faded sign for Billy Bob's Safari Park. 40 miles this way. Still there. Great. And we drove the 40 miles through the Everglades... And we come into this abandoned parking lot with this little wooden shack. And we go in, and I ask the guy what the price of everything is. And he goes, well, sir, every attraction is 25 bucks. But if you, if you buy the deal, it's only 75 bucks, and you get to do all four. Now, I like a good deal. So I'm like, okay, we'll do all four. Our first one was an airboat ride through the Everglades. It was awesome. Got to see alligators, and I pretended like we were on an episode of, you know, alligator hunters. I thought it was great. And then the second one, you got to take this big four-by-four pickup, and, and they drove you through these big mud puddles, and I was like, yeah, this is awesome. This is the best value for money I've ever had in my entire life. And then the third one, you got to hold a little baby alligator, And I learned something really important at that point in time. Baby alligators are really soft. And if you make the comment of, this feels like a nice pair of cowboy boots, the person in charge gives you a really dirty look. So now, we should have just quit right then and there. But that wouldn't have been a deal, would it? No, we had to go to the venomous snake show. And so they take you in to the venomous snake show and you sit there on these little bleachers and there's a three foot wall of plexiglass between you and this guy with an incredibly low IQ level who just takes snakes out of, out of cabinets and just starts playing with them. So he's like, well, this is a rattlesnake from Montana, so I'm just going to set this down over here, and this is a cotton mouth, and if it bites me, I've got 20 minutes, and I'm like, it took us 30 minutes to drive in from the interstate. Like, you know, and then, like, and then he's got a python around his neck, and I'm completely paralyzed by fear. I can't move. And so the show ends, and Marcella's like, okay, it's time to go. And I'm like, no, I think I'm just going to sit here because I can't move. Well, that night about two o'clock in the morning, seems when weird things happen. Marcella wakes up to me standing on the edge of our bed, looking at the bathroom door. And she's like, hey babe, can I help you? I'm like, I I gotta go to the bathroom. She's like, well it's right there. And I'm like, the floor is covered in snakes. So I have to jump from the bed to the bathroom without hitting my head on the top of the door. And she's like, or you could walk across the carpet. I was like, they're covered in snakes. And with that, I lunge at the bathroom, Superman style, (laughs) catching the top of the door and just knocking myself right out. So bad. When I tell you guys that I have an irrational fear of snakes, I'm not lying. But this is what I want to encourage you guys with. We're actually starting to draw to a close. It's going to be a short message tonight. 
Because I want you to understand that God calls us to be strong and courageous in a world that wants to discourage us. There was a moment right before I picked that snake up. And I can show you the video at another point in time. But there was this moment where I was standing there and I got done talking to the students and sharing about my irrational fear of snakes. And, and I was looking at the snake on the table and this voice in my head said, Ben, give up. Walk away. Take the shame, take the guilt, be a failure. Who cares? Who's really going to care? You can quit your job, you can find a a job somewhere else. You can just walk away. Take the shame, take the guilt. Don't worry about this. And there was this moment where I, everything inside of me started to scream, run away. And I don't know about you guys, but as I try to follow God and live a life of holiness, I get those same small voices in my head. It's okay to gossip a little bit. That person was mean to me. It's okay to follow this person on Instagram. A little bit of inappropriateness won't hurt me. It's okay to listen to this song. It's okay to look at that image. It's okay to make those jokes. And suddenly, all of this stuff starts to creep in. And the voice of temptation becomes louder and louder and louder. And what I want you guys to do tonight is I want you to replace that voice that tells you God is a lie. That you are a mistake. And I want you to replace it with this phrase, rock, hazak, amatz. As the worship team come up, I want you guys to stand to your feet because we're going to prepare to go back into worship. And tonight, my hope and my goal and my whole reason for being here, Evan, we can pop this down, is that you'll get this idea of rock hazakamats. See, being strong and courageous means that you apologize first in every conflict. Being strong and courageous means that you sit with that kid that nobody else wants to sit with. Being strong and courageous means that you never lie. Being strong and courageous means that when people start to gossip around you, you say, actually, I don't want to listen to that because that person does not deserve you to speak to them like that. Rakazaka Mats means that you turn the internet off, you start unfollowing people on Instagram, that you say, pornography, you have no right in my life, any addictions to drugs, alcohol, or anything else, you have no place here. Because Jesus says that you can be strong and courageous in him. Jesus came to this earth as the example of how we should live. And what did he do? He went up the mountain. He spent time with God. Then he went down and he spent time in good community. And then he went and went about the father's business. So we're going to say this three times together. So I want you guys to repeat after me on three. You ready? One, two, three. Three. Rock, hazak, amatz. Why? Because God created you and he doesn't make mistakes. You ready? One more time. Rock, hazak, amatz. Now I want you to say it a third time so loud that the gates of hell start to rattle. But rock, hazak, amatz. Because Jesus died for you and he loves you and you are empowered to live differently. One more time. Rock, hazak, See my victory. Well, let's sing this together. With all I see is a mountain. You see a mountain. And as I walk through the sky, your love surrounds me. There's nothing. Come on, declare this with me. 
God just moving in this place, seeing, standing back there and watching you guys worship, proclaiming how good God is and that he is our king and he is so good. It's so powerful. Um, So my name is Jesse. For those of you guys who don't know me, um, I'm the new young adults pastor at Bears Paw Campus. So good. Um, And I'm here. Yeah, Bears Paw. Woo! I'm here tonight to share my story with you guys. Um, so if you guys want to sit down, you can. Um, it's not going to be very long. Um, 
But yeah, the team who plans these nights just asked me to come and share my story with you guys. And I just really hope that, I'm sure many of you guys will connect with my story, but I really just hope that the Lord speaks to you about who he is and and who you are through my story. Um, So many of you guys may relate to this, but I grew up in church. Anybody, Anybody who grew up in church? here. Yeah, come on, many of you. Come on, churchgoers for life. Um, No, I grew up in church. I went to kids club, Sunday school, was in the services. I helped my parents served, and church was my life. But like a normal kid, I had issues. My family had issues. We weren't perfect. Um, But all throughout my childhood, I really struggled. I struggled with anger. Um, I was a very angry person. I struggled to trust people. I didn't know where I fit in. I didn't know where I belonged, so I just chose to push everybody away instead of trying to make friends. I said, nobody likes me. That's what what I believed when I was younger. Nobody likes me, nobody wants me, so I'm just gonna be there for everybody else, but as soon as anybody wants to get to know me, I'm just gonna push them away. Um, So that's where I was, that's how I grew up. Even though I went to church and life seemed good on the outside, on the inside, I was angry. I was bitter, I was frustrated, I was lonely, I felt like I had no purpose, nobody could see me, I was unseen, I was invisible. Um, But when I was 13 years old, even though I'd heard the gospel over and over and over again growing up, I went out to camp. And that week at camp really transformed my life because I saw God, not as a God who's angry, who stands, you know, in, in heaven and stays there and just judges us and condemns us, but he's a God who loves us so much that he came to serve us and not to be served, which is what the Bible says that Jesus says who he is. He came to serve and not be served. And God really captured my heart that week, being like, okay, God, if you're a God who will come and not just be angry, but who will come to love us, I want to follow you. I want to follow that God who is kind and who is gentle. So when I was 13, I gave my life to Jesus at camp, and a few weeks later, I got baptized. It was amazing. Life-changing decision, best decision I've ever made. But when I was later in a teenager, I I realized that I had accepted Jesus into my heart, and I had gotten baptized, but life was still the same. I was angry, I was frustrated, and I was bitter. And I was in this place where um, I would hang out with my, my youth friends, um, and I realized that they weren't the best influences in my life. The, the people who I hung out at youth, youth group, um, they started partying. And they started dating and getting boyfriend-girlfriend relationships, and they started sneaking around. And I started joining that crowd. I started doing that thing, doing what they did. I never partied, but I started into this dating scene and I was out till two o'clock in the morning, um, sneaking around with my friends, um, trying to find their approval, trying to show them that I could be like them and I don't know what I was looking for. I was just doing the teenager thing and I realized when I was later a teenager that okay, I was living this life I was lying to my youth leader who cared for me. I was disobeying my parents. And here I was still trying to fight for people's approval, but I was still angry and bitter on the inside. And I realized, okay, I need to make a choice in this moment. I gave my life to Jesus. I got baptized, but I'm not living for him. I'm living for the approval of others, but for the approval of my Heavenly Father. I was lying to people, disobeying my parents. I was hurting everybody around me who cared for me. Um, So I had to make a choice. My first choice was either to follow my youth friends, who I realized were bad influences in my life, who were leading me on a pathway to sin, and to more shame, and to more anger, and more bitterness, and broken relationships. Or my second choice was to follow Jesus to leave my friends behind and to say, okay, Jesus, I'm not just gonna give my yes to you, I'm not just gonna show up at youth for you, but I'm going to live for you. And that's where my testimony starts, is because when I gave Jesus that yes in that moment when I realized I had a choice to make, to continue to sin, or to choose life in him and to give up. I knew, I knew that when I made that choice to follow him and to no longer hang out with my friends till two o'clock into the morning, to no longer have dating relationships that were empty and just physical and not okay, I knew in that moment that I was about to lose everything that I had worked for. My friends would hate me, they would no longer wanna hang out with me, and I would be alone. 
but in that moment, I chose to follow Jesus. I chose Jesus over people. I chose Jesus over sin. And what happened in the days that came later when I started to read my Bible and pray and I started to change my life to look like the life that I knew Jesus wanted me to live, something amazing happened. I started, instead of being angry, I started to feel joy. Instead of feeling shameful, I started to feel like there is no condemnation in Christ, that there is grace for me and I don't need to be ashamed. I felt like, okay, the place where I didn't feel like I had belonging, I now have a place that I belong in relationship with my Heavenly Father. Where I felt lost, I felt like I had a purpose. And so that's where my testimony starts. In Matthew 10, 39, it says this, If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. And I experienced that in my life. It, making a decision to choose Jesus, it cost me my friends. It cost me everything. I was lonely on the outside, but on the inside, I had Jesus. And on the inside, I know who I was. And because of that decision, Jesus has brought me along the journey that has led me here in front of you today where I get to tell you that choosing Jesus is scary. But like Pastor Ben says, God has called us to be strong and courageous because what we may choose on our own is one life, but God has a life that he has promised us that is so more full with everything that more than we could ever ask, dream, or imagine. It's a life full of purpose. It's a life full of love. It's a life full of joy. It's a life full of peace. And we can't get that when we choose to do life on our own. And so I want to encourage you guys tonight is how are you going to choose Jesus? How do you need to choose Jesus tonight? There may be some of you who are here who have never heard the gospel before and you just heard it from Ben. You've heard how Jesus has changed my life and you want to make a decision right now that you want to choose Jesus. Or there might be some of you who feel like, man, I have given my yes to Jesus, but I've slunk back into a life of sin and shame and I need to repent. I need to turn back and choose Jesus once again. You can do that tonight. There may be some of you here who have said, I'm on fire for Jesus and I want to keep giving my yes to him. And you may want to get baptized and we have the baptism tank ready and a team ready to meet with you and chat with you about baptism so you can give your yes to Jesus tonight in that way. But I want to encourage you, the Bible says this, it says, if today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Which means for those of you today who may feel like God is tugging at your heart and saying he's calling you and you know that he's wanting your yes, today is your day. Don't harden your heart by not stepping forward. Don't harden your heart by not going for a prayer. Don't harden your heart by not going to get baptized. Take that step of faith and there's... God can do so much in your life. He can heal your wounds. He can help you where you're bitter. He can heal your frustrations. He can give you purpose. He can give you life. He can give you love. He can give you all these things that we can't give ourselves. He can give you, most of all, eternal life, a life that never perishes or fades. So we're going to, I think there's going to be some baptisms happening, but if you want to accept Jesus into your life or if you feel like God's calling you to repent, we've got our prayer team on this side of the stage. They would love to pray with you. Or if you've got something going, on and you just need to come and pray there there for you but we're gonna turn over to baptisms and hear about some amazing people who have chosen to give their life to Jesus heart that was fantastic my name is Kevin I'm the pastor at South Campus I need to make a declaration this evening okay he is risen sorry let me try that again there's supposed to be a response to that he is risen If that declaration is not true, what we've just been doing this evening is meaningless. And what we're about to do is nothing at all. But Jesus is alive, okay? And he lives today, and he's risen from the dead. And so it's exciting to be here talking about baptism. Baptism uh, doesn't save us. Baptism is a declaration, an outward sign that we do of something that's changed in our heart. Uh, It's similar, as I use the illustration, to my wedding ring. My wedding ring doesn't save me. Or, sorry, my wedding ring doesn't... Well, it did save me. Sorry, hon. My wedding ring doesn't make me married. What makes me married is the covenant that I made August the 16th, 1986 to a woman I love dearly, and I wear this ring 
as a declaration to the covenant that I made to her. What's about to happen here is people are going to make declarations. They're going to share their stories, and we're going to have an outward sign of their obedience to Jesus by being baptized. I want to introduce you to Rosie. Rosie is at South Campus with her family, and um, I was told just today again that Rosie has been looking forward to this more than her own birthday party, okay? And so we've talked a lot together the last little while, and this is definitely a decision that she wants to make. And we talked about this being in obedience to what Jesus asked when he says, believe and be baptized. So Rosie, I need you to tell everybody here, what do you believe about Jesus? I believe that he died on the cross and he made other people happy and he rose from the dead again. That's really exciting. And then when we talk about baptism, why do you want to be baptized? I want to follow what Jesus does and um, I feel like this is the next step for me. The next step in your spiritual journey. One of the things that I, when I was talking with Rosie and her family, uh, you used a phrase and you said that I want to do what Jesus asked me to do. And I thought, what a great statement for all of us today. If we all did what Jesus asked us to do, this world would be a better place. All right? So, Rosie, in just a minute, I'm going to get you in the tank here, but have you asked Jesus to forgive your sins? Have you given your life to him and you want to follow him the rest of your life? Yes. yes. Well, then I'm going to baptize you, Rosie, in a minute here in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, okay? Pastor Kevin stole all the good things I was going to say about baptism, so. Um, you know, today is an exciting day. I have a f my friend Natalie, who is here to get baptized, and she is here to declare that she is ready to take this next step to give her life completely to Christ in every way, shape, and form, and say today is the day she's going to step forward and walk in that obedience. Natalie, would you tell everyone what... Uh, a little bit about your story and why you want to be baptized today. I grew up in a Christian home surrounded by many good and godly people who influenced me, taught me, and helped me to grow closer to God over the years. I chose to follow Jesus back in grade school at Northwest when my small group leader invited us to do so after our lesson. Ever since then, I have been faithfully following him. For years, I have wanted to be baptized, but I've always been nervous of having to share my testimony. After all, nothing overly exciting had ever happened in my walk with Jesus, nothing that was testimony-worthy at least. I had always come up with excuses to escape having to finally be baptized, believing that one day I would experience some sort of climactic moment in my faith that would mark the perfect moment for baptism. It has not been until quite recently that I realized one doesn't need to experience one special moment in his or her faith in order to be baptized. Baptism is a command from God, no matter how exciting your testimony is. One other thing that pushed me to make this decision was Pastor Taylor's sermon at the last now service. The lesson he shared encouraged me to take complete ownership of my faith and pursue an active and growing relationship with God. I wanted to commit fully to following him and to completely dedicate my life to pursuing growth in my understanding of him and his will. No more excuses, nothing standing in the way. And so now I wish to obey God's command and take this next step in my faith. Today, I see my baptism as not only a symbol of the death of my old self and new life in Christ, but as an act of war against the enemy as I openly declare my permanent affiliation with our Lord. Amen. Come on. Natalie, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for you? that he forgave you of your sins, and do you choose to continue? Have you made that choice to follow him? Yes. Okay, now we baptize you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
have, I have the privilege of inviting my friend Noah to come up as well. Yeah, absolutely. It is a privilege to see Noah here, and I'm his father. And um, we named Noah, Noah Joshua Brake. Not because we wanted him to build a boat or lead an army. Noah, because Noah was obedient when it wasn't popular. And Joshua, because he was obedient and he had integrity. Noah, why don't you share how you came to know Jesus and why you're here today to get baptized? For as long as I can remember, my strongest desire has been to know who I am. This grand search for identity was at first a plague upon my mental health. I tried good grades, believing a spotless record and a high-paying job could define me. After finding only disappointment and limitations, I attempted to seek refuge in the LGBTQ. However, I found only brokenness and confusion. Many destructive habits emerged as I began to realize that I couldn't fill the hole in my heart. Eventually, I was asked on a date by a classmate, and I dreamed of being defined as a good boyfriend, and eventually, husband. But in the midst of negotiating a potential relationship, I was hit with a wave of conviction. God was calling out to me at that moment, I have more in store for you than this. I should have listened then, but my heart was torn, and it took me two whole weeks to just to say no to my classmate. This left me more broken than I'd ever been before. Instead of accepting God's outreached hand, I dove deep into my habits. My parents found the evidence of what had happened and saw my pain. At first, I quit my habits because I was an obedient child, or perhaps it was because I was too numb to care. Either way, I was at rock bottom. That's when I started to pay attention to the Lord. He reminded me of the gospel and his commands to me as his creation. Those messages I'd heard a thousand times before started to pierce my heart. Finally, this past March, sitting in a now service not unlike this one, I realized what I'd been missing my whole life and cried out to the Lord, enter my heart. I can't bear this burden any longer. And just like that, I was saved. My life was immediately filled with God's amazing peace and joy. I knew who I was, and there was no feeling like it. But as any born-again sorry, but as any born-again Christian in this room will tell you, the journey doesn't end there. The Lord called me to be a servant in youth ministries in grades five six, where I was taught the power of service and the meaning of fellowship. He'd called me to form spiritual disciplines, starting with reading his word, where I learned the comfort and peace of good habits. At my secular school, I was called to form an alpha program. My first experience with really standing up for my beliefs, where I learned that God gives strength beyond comprehension. Looking back on these past nine months, I'm so amazed by how much the Lord has done in my life in under a year. And now I can see that baptism is the next step of obedience, a declaration of my new life in Christ. So, to conclude my testimony, an encouragement to all those listening. God's power knows no bounds. No matter how much pain you're in, no matter how much you've messed up, no matter how much it seems as if no one cares, God still wants you. All you have to do is let him into your life. Thank you. Now, Noah, the world and the devil tried to keep you, but Jesus rescued you. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Is he um, both your Savior and Lord, and do you now dedicate your life to follow him? Yes. Excellent. Upon confession of your faith, uh, Noah, um, in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dead in my sins. Let's we'll stand and worship together. Lost without hope, with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested, my life began. Last was redeemed, only beauty remained. My orphan heart 
was given to me. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made Chains, I'm a prisoner. No more. My shame was a ransom. He faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. Rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose. And that's when our life begins in Jesus. Can I get an amen? 
Well, I have my friend Natalia here. Natalia, why don't you just tell us a little bit about what led you to get baptized here tonight? Um, today, I came to church at 11 a.m., and they were saying to come today to the night service. And usually, I have never came here before, but something in my heart told me to come. And then when you guys mentioned that you're doing baptisms, I came right to you because I feel like now's the time to show my faith to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, Natalia, I'm going to encourage you to step on in, and I'm going to ask you a few questions here. Natasha, have you repented of your sin? Have you trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and do you now promise and commit to following him the rest of your days? Yes, I do. Amen. Well, Natalia, based upon your confession of faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it doesn't end there. I have my friend John here with me. And John, why don't you tell us a little bit about what has led you to want to get baptized here tonight? Okay. Uh, then, uh, I've been struggling for drug addiction uh, since 10 years. I was 14 years old. That time I was in the dark then. Uh, my parents... My parents uh, Planned to move here in Canada when I was 16. Then, to make the story short, after two years, I've been using uh, crystal meth uh, again. And then, I met a guy who's a drug pusher. Uh, then, I've been a, dri a driver of a drug pusher for like almost a year. And then, I asked God, why, why am I being a selfish back then? And then after a few years, I met uh, Uncle Miguel, who's uh, helping me. He put me on the rehab on his house for like almost four months. Wow. Yeah. And then he helped me to sober the drug addiction and craving. And yeah, and I thank God for my parents, who's not... Uh, never l letting me down. He never, they never forsake me. They, and I thank to Jesus because, uh, sorry. <laughs> I thank to Jesus because, uh, he, he keep fighting on me ever since then. But, uh, he, he never forsake me. He gave me the light and he, re he removed the mountains of problems for me. And now I'm surrendering all my life to Him. And I'm accepting Him as a Lord, as my Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, the Bible, the Bible says, believe and be baptized. So, brother, we're going to ask some questions, and I'm going to encourage you to step in the water. John, have you repented of your sin? Have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And do you now commit to following him the rest of your life? Yes, I am. Amen. Well, John, based upon your confession of faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What a great night to celebrate all the good things of Jesus. So this is my friend Israel. Israel, would you just take just a couple minutes and just share what God's done and why you want to get baptized tonight? Um, so uh, I was on my addiction too. So I, because uh, of my addiction, I, I went to jail for four and a half months. And when I was in jail, uh, I received a letter from my wife to, to get divorced. And at that time, uh, I just want to end up in my, myself, you know, and... There's something in my head, like uh, some, 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 something like whisp whispering me that if you, if I end myself, 
like what happened to your kids, you know. Yeah. So, so that's when I know Jesus that it's He's working with me. Amen. So, not only for for me but all of us. Awesome. So, yeah, I thank Jesus. It's awesome. I love it when Jesus shows up in that that last moment. So, Israel, have you repented of your sins? Yes. Do you choose to follow Jesus the rest of your life? Yes. Do you promise to make him the Lord of your life? Yes. Then upon, I'm going to have you step into the bathtub here. Upon, just come forward a little bit. Upon profession of your faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
that when they go down to come back up, they're new creations, right? We've, we've given our lives to Christ. we become new creations. And so this is what happens. God brings dead things to life. He brings dead dreams to life. He's in the business of changing lives. Amen? So come on, we're going to celebrate this. We're going to sing this. Get up out of that grave. We believe all dead things in this room are going to come to life. Come on. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Hey! Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Come on. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Hey! Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Yeah. baptisms. Lord, would we treasure those testimonies in our heart? Would we treasure the word that Ben brought in our heart? And would we live it out? Would it travel from our head to our heart to our hands, Lord? We thank you, Father, for the opportunity tonight we had to learn, to grow in community, in connection with you. But Lord, would it lead to action? Rock, hazak, amat. Amen. Amen, amen. I hope you guys... Had a blast tonight. Woo! Who's excited to hang out later? Yeah! It's a great time worshiping together with you, but we want to encourage you guys to dive deep into community. So if you haven't connected with our ministries yet this, this evening, please do so great. 7 to 12. If you go out these doors, head up the stairs. Youth Ministries is there to say hi to you. Make sure you talk to us. And get connected. Yeah, and if you're a young adult in the room, there's donuts waiting for you in the cafe, Woo! custom made, so you can head over there. And hey, we want you to know, if you are not plugged into community, come to either Bears Paw Campus or Bridgeline Campus on Tuesday night at 6.30, and let's start doing life together. Amen? Amen. Awesome. Well, hey, if you're here and you would like some prayer, if there's still some business you got to do with the Lord, don't leave this place. We have prayer partners who are eager, who are excited to pray with you. And so you can find a, a prayer partner. They'll have some blue lanyards on. And uh, you can just chat with them, share what's going on in your heart, and let's pray together. And I know you guys are dying to hear about when our next night of worship is. And it is not going to be December 3rd. Whoa. No. Okay. Whoa. Huge change. Get this, okay? New Year's Eve 2023, December 31st. We are doing a New Year's Eve night of worship, starting with food and hangout at 9 p.m. Bring your friends, bring your family, your whole family's welcome. So if you celebrate New Year's Eve with your family on a regular basis, bring them to, to that night. Service starts at 10 and will go until it hits midnight. That's so right. That it's December 31st. I hope to see you there. That concludes our evening. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out. Don't forget to get connected. We will see you outside. Later. Have a great night.
Thank you.